Hey, welcome everyone. Kevin Carpenter here with Patrice Roy. We're getting ready for CppCon 2024. How's it going today, Patrice? It is going fine, and I am looking forward to that conference again this year. It's going to be awesome. I yeah, it's you know last year we had some good growth. I liked where we were at last year because we were downstairs, and it's just kind of you know just felt uh, intimate's not the right word, but it's the best word I can come up with. You know, it felt well, cozy. Yeah, I, I, that's what I would have said too. I mean, we were closer together, but it was still a big event, lots of fun people. But the the, the layout, I think, suited the conference well. Yeah. Yeah. So, do you have a favorite talk you're looking forward to or speaker? Yeah, yeah, you you, you had me you asked me that earlier, and I, I was looking at it. And there's so much good stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. So, so I, I, I'll give you a few because I was looking at the Monday schedule, and there's one at the same time as I am, which is bad. This is the bad thing about Supercon. There's too much stuff. But there's one uh, called Bridging the Gap, Writing Parable Programs for CPU and GPU, which is totally something interesting, but exactly the same time as I am. This is really, really bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Later on, good thing oh, stuff's recorded, right? <laughs> awesome. But I would like to go there, but I, I, I'm, I'm hoping people will go to my talk too because it's going to be cool. Um, uh, on Monday, also, I saw something. I, I like cool titles, so uh, as you probably noticed from from my talk, uh, it's called "Composing Ancient Mathematical Knowledge into Powerful Bit Fiddling Techniques." So, with a title like that, it's bound to be cool. Um, on Tuesday, there's a guy I know because I met him at CBCon last year, and he's been uh, participating in the G14 with us, uh, called Khalil Estelle, doing a talk on exceptions for firmware. That's going to be interesting. Yes. Um, I have a soft spot for the Beeman project because I, I knew Beeman does a bit, and he was an awesome person. So I, I, if there is no uh, ISO meeting on Wednesday, I'm going to go to try to the talk by David Senko, who's a great speaker all the time. Yes, he is. Okay, so I have a problem with Thursday too. See, because see, we can't put at the same time Michael Case and Lisa Lippincott, two of the most awesome speakers on the planet. Yeah. I'm probably going to go to Lisa because she always blows my mind, but Michael is very good also. So something called Perspectives on Contracts is bound to be enlightening. And, and to be honest, two things on Friday because I that I'm going to try to do both, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make the second one. There's something called An Ode to Concepts by Nina Ranz, an awesome person, very technically sound, very good person, very nice. And yes. and a soft spot for Cassio Neri in the afternoon because you, you, wouldn't, you won't know that, but I've been quoting him for years, but I've never met the guy. He, he wrote a text on Dr. Dobbs like way, way back on a really cool trick with exceptions and lambdas that I liked and that I've been reusing in classes for like 15 years or something, but I never met the guy. So I, if I can get to him and say, thank you, my friend, <laughs> you can say, who are you? I guess <laughs> it's going to be cool. <laughs> but but normally I tend to have to leave uh a bit earlier than I would like on Friday afternoons to catch the plane, so I might miss it. Yeah, uh, it's it's funny because um, you know with all the other conferences I sometimes work and help with. Yeah, Cassio, uh, I got to see part of his talk, and and David Sankel, you know, when they started the Beeman project this year at C plus plus. Now, I mean, like you're saying, it's there's just so much good stuff this year. And so, speaking of good stuff, you've actually got a class that you're teaching. Um, yeah. optimizing with modern C++ in 2024. So tell yeah. us about that because a class with you. It, well, it's interesting, I think. Uh, the, the class was given last year too. The, 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 that class's uh, inception came from a, a, a request by a game company I often work with. It's uh, IDOS in this case, because I, I work with game programmers quite a bit. And, and they said, we would like something on how to optimize code in a portable manner. So use the language better to get um, better results, better returns out of it. Uh, in terms of how memory is organized, in terms of, of, of uh, how to profile stuff, how to find the places where it's going to hurt in my code, how to uh, make the code smaller, faster, more deterministic, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> So I, I, I built that class for uh, that company, but I first gave it at CppCon last year because mm -hmm. schedule-wise, it just fell there. Uh, we had fun. I think it was a cool class, really. Uh, and um, after that, I got to give it to the actual uh, games people. I gave it a few times. It was a fun class to give. And I said, why not give it again this year? So we'll see. Uh, I've been giving classes at CppCon since 2016. Every year, if I'm not mistaken, I've had at least one, sometimes two. And I'm hoping the run continues because it's a lovely venue and I meet great people there. 
So I have to, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I know that, it, you know, modern C++ in 2024, but how, how, when we look at the versions of C++, do you end up covering like how you can do performance and modernization, whether you're in C++ 17, 20 or 23, or is it mainly just the newest? No, no, no. Uh, the uh, my baseline is C plus plus seventeen. I make sure that my stuff runs there most of the time because uh, lots of engines that my uh, usual customers uh, have been using or are still using uh, are limited to C plus plus seventeen. Mm -hmm. There is a growing uh, part of the community that uses twenty, so I do use twenty in my my class. I give glimpses of twenty three all the time because it's so much cool to see the new stuff. But I make sure that most of the stuff runs on 17 and if i give 20 specific stuff i try to have a backup uh, yeah. for those companies who don't go there normally i don't have to go lower than 14 but i can you know because i have lots of tricks i can go back to 98 if i'm stuck <laughs> <laughs> I, I i even have one example that i've been building for over years that i know runs for c plus plus prior to 98 because i've had to use it in an airplane system recently so yes Use the very old compiler. <laughs> <laughs> so the good part is, whatever compiler someone's using, for the most part, they're going to find they're going to find some gems taking the class. Yes, I'm old them. enough to have tricks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, and and so and if when everyone's done taking your class, because if you're coming to CppCon, you you know to get training, I have to say this like. This is probably one of the most cost-effective ways to get training from a trainer because to come to the class is far cheaper than than bringing you into. I mean, please hire a Patrice to come into your company and teach. You know, um, however, if you want to send someone, this is the way to do it because it's just a yeah. cost-effective way. Absolutely, because because you, you, there's not just me. There's a lot of, of very proficient people there, so you get to meet all of the others for one thing. The classes are are yeah, they cost something, but they cost as you said a lot less than bringing me somewhere. So if you, lots of companies, what they will do is they will send one or two people to my class, and then mm -hmm. they will, those people will go back to their company and bring the returns, and then we communicate through email if they have questions or something like that. That just works. So it is an effective way. They can also see other people with similar problems. So that's interesting because we trade war stories and we trade tricks together. So sometimes ah, we'll yeah. discover profiling tools during the class that they like, they share it with the others, and everyone grows from that. Yeah. Uh, they, the, uh, the main thing about these conferences is the people. I mean, they're bright people with real problems, so the discussions are very um, interesting, friendly, enlightening. Everyone gets out of these classes better and happier, I would say. So... You know, as you were talking, you've had lots of time helping teach at game companies, which leads me into the segue of many ways to kill an orc or a hero, which Absolutely. has got to be the, for me, it's the best title at CppCon. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not, that's not saying much because there's, there's so many good titles. It's, I know. It's cool talk. I have to be honest, I have too much material for this one because I tried it with the local uh, users group uh, two months ago. <clears throat> Yeah, it was at the high frequency trading firm. They they were hosting it. Lots of people in the room. It was a cool crowd. Uh, I've been teaching for lots of years, so I knew yes. about half of the people there because, like students, they, they they come back from time to time because they're they're happy to see me. That's cool. Um, so I gave that talk. Lots of reactions. Lots of interaction because it's the kind of talk where people can stop me anytime. We, we just chat. We react. It's it's written or built in a way uh, to make people react, ask questions, and disagree with me. So it's kind of cool. But we actually, yeah, we we make an effort to kill lots of of orcs and and heroes. I'm a nonviolent person, but in code, you're allowed to do things like that. So <laughs> ways to make it fast. Uh, it's it's not an optimization uh, optimization. Uh, talk. It's a talk on ways to do things. So various approaches to your software to solve this little problem, which is an excuse to make something fun, of course, uh, with actual uh, or getting pictures. That's cool. And yeah. you're absolutely right. As we were talking at the beginning, there are so many good topics going on this year. Um, but I have a bias because like I was saying, I think I've been killing orcs since the late 80s or something with yeah. <laughs> You're a wise person. But killing heroes happens too. It's part of the game. The, uh, yes. uh, the, 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 there's uh, many against one, one against one, uh, fights to make the, the uh, situations to make the fight more even or biased. There, there's many ways to do this. It's kind of an interesting <laughs> problem. 
And so everyone needs to come see your talk. Of and course. I look forward to seeing you at CPPCon here. And, you know, we're not too far out. I, September 14th is when classes start. It's and then the conference soon. will soon after that. I'm looking forward. It's so much fun every year. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad I've been there every single year since the beginning. And I hope not to miss one ever. That's awesome. Thanks for your time today, Patrice. Thanks for your, for your, for, thanks for your time too, my friend. <laughs> I will see you in Aurora. Bye-bye.